How's it going, you guys? Scott with Everyday Home Repairs. Now, rental equipment can be a real unlock for your DIY home projects, but you do need to have a little knowledge to make sure you're not overpaying, making the most of that time, and most importantly, doing that safely. The stakes do really start to rise as you get mini excavators, small compact utility loaders like the one behind me, backhoe loaders, or anything else that's really gonna help you around the house, but will require you having quite a bit more knowledge. So I'm gonna quickly run you through nine tips from what I've learned over the years, and we'll use this little guy behind me as a little bit of a demo. And also along the way, there's this little hack, if you know, you can get basically 50% off your rental just by knowing a little bit of information. So let's jump into it. So tip number one is how the heck do we get these things to our house or to our project? And you have three main options. We'll start off with the most common, which is get it dropped off. Get it actually dropped off in your driveway and picked up from your driveway. That means you're not gonna have to have the truck that can haul it, you're not gonna have a trailer, and you're not gonna have to know how to secure the loads. That is the lowest barrier of entry. Just understand it's gonna be a little bit of a cost. Specifically for this guy, it would have been $100 to drop it off and $100 to pick it up just for your reference, but that's gonna vary a little bit depending on your location. Option number two is what I did here, and that is use one of their trailers and then haul that to your job site and then go ahead and return that to the equipment rental store. Now they're gonna help you load that up and secure the load down at the rental store, but just know you need to have that knowledge when you get home and also when you need to load it back up to return it. So if you have any questions, you're not comfortable with things, make sure you ask those questions before you take off from the rental store. But also make sure you understand the vehicle that will be hauling the trailer. So if you go with option two, you get the trailer, make sure that your vehicle is capable. That's gonna be both from payload perspective and also from what it can tow. And then for option two, there is a little bit more cost. On this one, it's $60 per day. The machine is $255 per day. If you need a trailer, it's $60 per day. So it's much cheaper than option one, just as long as you're only doing a one or two day rental. And then the last one is if you have your own trailer that is capable of doing this, I do have a trailer that's a seven by 14 dump trailer. It can handle 10,000 pounds of payload. This little guy, this MT85 from Bodcaps, only 3,100 pounds. So it could easily handle that load. But again, you're gonna be responsible for loading that machine, securing it down, having your own chains, having your own binders. But for tip number one, my recommendation, most homeowners is go ahead and get that dropped off and picked up. Go with that first option. Now, tip number two is pick the right piece of equipment. Now, you're not gonna inherently know every piece of equipment out there and how it's best used, but there are different ways to accomplish the same job and some are very effective and others not so much. For instance, if you're digging a trench, understand how deep is that trench gonna be and how wide does that trench need to be? If I was doing a drain line for my downspout, I would pick a trencher. Some people might default to, oh, I need a mini excavator and I'll just go ahead and scoop out that trench. Well, that mini excavator is gonna take way longer. It's gonna reach way deeper, but I don't need that capability on that job. So your best resources on this is working with those guys and gals at the rental store, but you can also do some searches online, just doing your homework ahead of your rental and tackling that project. And then tip number three kind of goes to something similar, and that is do not underestimate attachments. Most of your modern equipment, like this compact utility loader, your mini excavators, your skid steers, your compact track loaders, they're gonna have what are called auxiliary hydraulics. They're gonna have hydraulic takeoff or quick disconnects at the bucket, which means you can get a different attachment and actually power that attachment. For instance, in this lot, if I wanted to really smooth things out before seeding it, I might wanna get a power box scraper that is gonna be way easier to use than trying to like back drag the bucket along the ground and get everything smoothed out. So again, talk to those guys and gals at the rental store or do more research online and just look what attachments are available for the piece of equipment you're going with. So I got the MT85 unloaded and I'm about ready to go to work, but tip number four I wanna get in before we start doing any digging, and that is you guys need to reach out to 811. Now this is a little different in every state. In Illinois, we call it Julie, but it's a location service that you need to mark your property before you do any digging. So they're gonna come out and they basically mark your utility. So they're gonna mark water lines, they're gonna mark your power lines, your gas lines, super important. And then they'll also reach out depending on if you have buried fiber in the area. These are all things that you do not wanna be responsible for damaging. So you need to call Julie. And if you don't and you damage those, it can be a massive safety issue. 
and it can be a liability issue and cost you a ton of money. So reach out, search Google 811, and usually in your area, they're pretty darn responsive with a little direction on where you'll be digging, and then they'll go ahead and plant those flags and mark those utilities so you know where you can dig and where you can't dig. Now, tip number five is called a machine walk around. Before you start up the machine and get back to work, this could be in the morning or maybe after a lunch break, you wanna do a complete machine walk around. You're looking at your hydraulic cylinders, you're looking at your linkages, you're looking at your attachment points, and you're looking if there's just anything around your machine, around the tires or around the tracks or the undercarriage like we have with this MT85 from Bobcat. You just want to get eyes on. This is especially important when you have a skid steer. If you're in a skid steer, you jump in the cab and you can't see anything behind you, especially if you don't have a reversing camera system. So you need to do that complete machine walk around to make sure you're not gonna jump in the machine, back up and hit something, or, or even worse, hit somebody. You just wanna make sure everything's safe when you're getting back to work on the machine and also that you don't have any mechanical issues. In the morning, technically part of your machine walk around should be also a fluids check. You're checking your engine oil, you're checking your coolant levels, you're checking your hydraulic oils to make sure you're ready to work that day. So just make sure you're always doing a machine walk around before getting started on your project. And then number six is a best practice, and that is when you park the machine, make sure you're always grounding your implements. For instance, on this machine, when I'm done, I'll go ahead and park it and curl the bucket and lower it to the ground before turning the machine off. You do not want to leave your buckets or blades off the ground when they're off, as that can be a safety issue. So number seven is just operate within your comfort level. Never push any limits. So for instance, if I was doing what's called a stockpiling operation, I'm kind of building up dirt and gravel into a pile, I'm stockpiling, I wouldn't want to ride up that pile, right? It starts to increase the chances that I might have a rollover. Now a compact utility loader is not the most likely to roll over, but I wanna be super conservative on something like this because there is no ROPS, so there's no rollover protection, there's no cab, so I am completely exposed to the elements. So I wanna make sure I'm not pushing any limits. So then that goes if you're in a skid steer or especially a mini excavator without any glass or any cab, if by some chance you pushed your limits and it started to tip over, you must stay in the cab. Never try to jump out of the machine as it's rolling over. People do try to do that, and that can and has resulted in severe injury and even death. So if you are in a cab, the machine starts to get unstable and roll over. One, let's not push those limits. Let's make sure we don't get ourselves in that situation. And two, if it ever does happen to you, keep your arms, legs inside the cab and kind of hang on for the ride. And that is by far your best bet. Number eight is just take care of the machine to minimize the chances of extra charges when you return the machine. So we're operating within our limits, within our comfort zones. Also, when you return it, make sure you refuel the machine. Make sure you understand most of these machines are gonna have a diesel engine. So you need to put diesel in that tank which might be the first time you're actually pumping diesel. Power washing the machine is not a bad idea. If you are taking that back, you have a trailer, go ahead and run that through a power wash, get all the dirt off of it, and just return it as good or better than when you got it. And then pushing through the last one, number nine, this is where you can save some serious money. And that is, if I were to go in and rent on a Friday for this machine, I'd pay $255 for that daily rental. Now, where I rented this from is not open on Saturday or on Sunday. So technically, I can return that Monday morning and I can use it Friday, Saturday, and even Sunday and only be charged for one day. So that is a way to save 50% or even more on your rental fees. One thing to know, Usually you're gonna have a limitation on the number of hours that you can put on your rental machine. Usually that's around eight hours. So the key is whenever this engine is running, that clock is ticking. So when we do projects around the house, especially as DIYers, we're running a little bit, we're jumping off and going to the store, we're jumping off and handling something by hand. So always turn that engine off if it is not doing tangible work for your project. That way those eight actual operating hours can string over multiple days and you'll get no additional charges and you'll get as much as three days 
for the price of one. Now I know you guys have some additional feedback, so jump down in the comments and let me know what are the other tips that you get the most out of renting equipment for your DIY projects around the house. I always appreciate your guys' feedback personally, and I know the audience appreciates this too because there's a ton of value in those comments section. Now if you wanna see bang for the buck, the best truck attachment that I bought over the last few years, check out this video right here, and it's one of the things that I've actually bought at Harbor Freight that I highly recommend. I think it's a great value for the amount of work you get out of. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.